Welcome to Buckets, brought to you by BetMGM, the king of sports books. My name is Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer for the Action Network, joined by Brian Fonseca. Brian, explain to me, are you a Knicks fan? No. Okay. I am a New Yorker, but do you yeah. like? Do are you like? Are you interested in the Knicks? Yeah, sure. Like, are you like? Well, let me put it this way: when they win, are you happy, or are you? Is it, you don't have to be like Rob. Are you just like, oh, I'm glad the Knicks won. It's good for business if they win because <laughs> that's the answer I like. I do technically also work at the New York Post, so you know, as, as, you as long like as it. the Knicks keep winning playoff games, I have things to do. Uh, I am I am often mistaken for a Nuggets fan, and I have to explain to them that is not accurate. I really do not care, and they say, "Well," and Nuggets fans will be like, "Why not?" And I like because my check cashes either way. That's correct. That's the lesson there. Uh, but he is a Heat sympathizer, and so I've got him on to talk Heat Celtics as well as Pelicans Thunder. We'll talk about that game and uh, how how sad this is going to get for the Miami, or 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 will it? Uh, plus, we've got plays for the Wednesday night slate in the nba playoffs want to let you know you should download the action network app i haven't done this in a while haven't done this whole speech best way for you to track your picks you're going to get to see like you can turn on notifications for stuff like brandon anderson or brian or jim or michael fiddle and you can track when they put those bets into the app and then you can tell them and you can like look up the lines through the app do some quick slip action and get those in there our live shows go get pushed live to the app. So download the Action Network app. Also check out youtube.com slash the Action Network. Um, we are going to have another Buckets Live this week. I think it's going to be on Sunday. We were planning, I think, on Wednesday, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. I think it's going to be on Sunday at Buckets Live reacting to the first six games of the weekend. We'll do it in the dinner break before Pacers Bucks. So we'll give you best bets for Pacers Bucks in the last game of that night, uh, as well as recap the weekend. Make sure to be on the lookout for that Buckets Live. All right, Brian, we got two games in the association. The Miami Heat are 14 and a half point favorites after opening at 15 and a half. A little bit of, of money coming in uh, on the Heat, at least tickets. 95% of the tickets, 76% of the money on Miami. The total in that game currently in the Action Network app and systems is at 204 and a half, down from 206 and a half. Not exactly expecting the Miami Heat to light it up uh, in this one. The Oklahoma City Thunder. Seven and a half point favorites open at eight and a half. A little bit of action on uh, the Pelicans. Pelicans getting both money and tickets in this one. We have two similar kind of identities on these game looks. 211 and a half there is in the market. This open 213 and a half. There's still a 212 and a half if you want the under as we record this, but it's moving towards under 211 and a half. Uh, what is your best bets? What are your best bets for the Wednesday slate? I like Nikola Jovic over seven and a half points against the Celtics and kind of like the under for uh, Pelicans, Oklahoma City. All right. Uh, I'm laying the I'm laying the wood. I'm going minus 14 and a half with Celtics heat and I'm going minus seven and a half with Thunder Pelicans. I am playing chalk and I feel OK about that, especially I will say this. This is what's really great about. Uh, so the Action Network app has it. Heat are getting 95% of the tickets that we're tracking on the spread. 76% of the money, but we're tracking sharp action coming in on the Boston Celtics. Uh, so even though we're seeing, and like that 95-76 split is significant, right? Way more of the tickets, a lot of big money bets coming in on Boston. Uh, likewise, with the Thunder, 72% of the tickets and 70% of the money are coming in on the Pelicans. Uh, sharp action being tracked on the Thunder. All right. Uh, Nikola Jovic, the star of the attempted Damian Lillard trade talks. <laughs> the can't miss prospect that Joe Cronin will rue the day. Uh, why do you like him to pick up over seven and a half points here? Uh, by the way, this is a hilarious pick for like heat culture and all this. And like, what's their best bet? Jovic might get close to double digits. That's, uh, yeah. I, I like the, but give me the cap on it. Yeah, the spread is tough, even though, I mean, look, uh, early sharp money, Boston, pro systems, Boston, uh, yep. big money, yep. Boston, even though yep. the Heat are getting a lot of uh, the, the love there. But, you know, that sort of sets up for like, oh, this is the kind of game that Miami would cover. And I would feel better about that if Jimmy Butler were out there and if Terry Rozier were out there, because when you're missing your best and your third best player, did not say fourth, said third. Um, hard to cover a spread, even uh, if the Celtics uh, shooting doesn't hold up to exactly what it did in game one. Now, 
I like Nikola Jovic uh, in general, as you mentioned, uh, at one point, the potential centerpiece of a Damian Lillard trade that was not to be, although I think they wanted to keep him anyway. Um, Nikola Jovic over seven and a half points, 10 of 14 games. He reached this to end the regular season. He also did this in game one of the postseason, and he had 10 last game against Boston. And Miami needs Nikola Jovic. Like, they need his offensive juice. Like, if you watch them against the Boston Celtics, like, you know, they're clearly overmatched because they're so handicapped in terms of health. And we don't need to sit here and talk about how much Jimmy Butler means to their offense, as does the juice that Terry Rozier provided. And he was actually hitting things into gear before he went out due to a neck injury. And we don't know if he's going to play. Nikola Jovic is one of the only guys who can get a shot off against this team. Um, They need him to stretch the floor as a big man. They need him to facilitate. They need him to create offense. And they don't have a lot of guys that can do that competently. Like, you feel better about the ball in Nikola Jovic's hands in this situation than you do a, 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 than you do over most other Heat guys. Like, Haywood Highsmith, for example, he's not somebody that you want to create offense consistently. Tyler Hero, if he can put the ball on the floor against Derek White and Drew Holiday, it's still a little bit shaky. And by the way, he, he's another one who I looked at his under because he was at 20 and a half. And I'm like, man... Boston's just not gonna they're they're not gonna let Tyler Hero beat them, but they'll take their chances with others. And uh yeah, they just need Miami just needs Nikola Jovic. And in games where he's played 20 plus minutes, so 23 in the regular season, two more since then, one in the play and one in the playoffs. He's gotten over 15 of those 25 games, if you're including the playoffs. So, you know, when he plays, he actually gets us over. And then 25 minutes or more, you're looking at over an eight of 13 again including the playoffs so he played 25 minutes last time and i think he should be in that 25 30 minute range because they do need his offense yeah i mean i think it's interesting though the problem with yobish this year has been that he hasn't consistently been in the rotation um it was really funny when he was picking up dmps after how much he he media he state media was like how could you turn down nikola yovich for <laughs> damian lillard you had tyler hero and nikola yovich how could you turn down this amazing trade package? Um, I love that trade because we'll see what happens with the Bucs. We're up one though. But I really do think that maybe all three teams lost, which I think is amazing. I just think it's <laughs> incredible. It might be one of the funniest trades we've ever seen. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like the Yovich play. Somebody, somebody has got a score. And I just, part of this is, okay, so this is kind of goes against my cap, which is like, I don't know how seriously Boston's going to be able to take this the whole way. Like they just, it was, it was so ugly in game one. Now, that means that there's a really good opportunity to buy back here. I will say, if you're going to bet Miami in this game, don't bet the 14 and a half. I would tell you, like, go, or at least if you are, don't be afraid and, and bet the money line. Because if this gets weird, it gets super weird. Like, if this game is like, what is going on? Why is, you know, what? And we saw it in game one where the Heat had two big runs. Uh, first in the first quarter when they came back from being down huge to begin with. And then again in the fourth quarter to be like, ah, I might do a backdoors cover. And then it didn't happen. Um I'm taking the Celtics here, and the reason, one, let's just do the trend here. Um, in the playoffs, number one seeds in the first round when they're favored by double digits, and they covered the previous game, which was also a double-digit spread. Okay? 18-1 uh, and one straight up. <laughs> that history says they're going to win. 11-7-1 uh, and one ATS, 61%. If you want the logic on that, here's how it goes. The prior win, is, I think, is important in the prior cover because it indicates that that – you're ruling out two situations, one in which the market expected more of a team and they underperformed in the first one, which can be indicative of like a one game outlier, but can also be indicative of like, hey, the market's off on this, but it can't react enough in, in the subsequent game to be able to account for that. Like they still are, are anchored to the power rating. So it's like if you're favored by 14 in the first one and then 12 in the second one, you're still like, oh, we moved it two whole points, but you're still favoring them by a lot. But this is the opposite of that, where it's like, no, they were favored by a ton and they covered. So they, one, have the power rating was accurate in terms of the advantage that, the, that this team has to a certain degree, or to some degree at least. And then on top of that, um, they took the game seriously. And that to me is like the, the key in this cap is, I just think that Boston, if this was, if Miami was Atlanta, if Miami was Chicago, if Miami was... Indy and the game one had gone the way that it did. I would like the other team. I would probably be taking the, the points here despite the Matt Mitchell rule. And I'd sprinkle on the money line, but 
Boston is just not going to forget what this team has done to it. Like this is yes. It, Jimmy Butler is out and yes, they are um, a, a fairly and Terry Rozier is out and it's a fairly inept sack of, of garbage, but it's still the heat. And they felt that I think in game one in those moments where the heat made a run, I think they'll keep the pedal down. I think they're going to win this game by not, maybe not 20 plus, but I do think they'll cover the spread, especially, you know, it coming down. I just don't think they should have come down. I don't think that the, I don't think that the public, the public here is very much like, Oh, it's Miami. They're going to be in this one. And maybe they're right. I'm willing to bet the other side and lay the 14 and a half. Yeah. I, I do think the heat are going to get a game in this series. I actually bet that Celtics in five and I sprinkled on Celtics in six in case it's got really weird. And on the off chance that Chris Stapps Porzingis doesn't finish the series. Cause that's sort of the the question looming is in a playoff that looks like, okay, we're headed for a lot of injuries again. Is the, is Chris Stapps Porzingis going to make it through healthy the entire way? And I think part of betting on the heat to win a game or two, you have to sort of factor in, Hey, is Chris Stapps Porzingis going to finish the series? If he does, then that's problematic for the heat because Chris Stapps Porzingis is really a problem for them. He's one of the only guys that gives bam problems consistently because of the way he could stress the floor. And if he's hitting shots from 30, like he was picking and popping to 27, 28, 30 feet. Even Nikola Jovic after the game, it's like, you know, they didn't have this last year. This is very different from Marcus Smart, right? Um, And the reason why people were skeptical of it was largely health related. Yeah. If you saw him in Washington, like you knew like, yeah, this could be a problem if he's healthy. He's been healthy and Boston is healthy. So that's really an issue there. I would say if the Heat do win a game this series, this feels like it could be it. But because, and it's really because we go back to talking about how good they were on the road this year. Like for all their faults, they're the best in the Eastern Conference ATS on the road all regular season, which is crazy because they also were like top five in games missed due to injuries. They were number one as a road underdog in the Eastern Conference as well, ATS. So I do think that if you are going to pick them, I would say, yeah, um, just sprinkle on the money line if that's the case. But I, I could see a, they, they almost backdoor covered last game and the shooting variance was what it was. Like there was that one point where the Celtics were hitting over 40% from three on high volume, yeah. very high volume, where the Heat were on lesser volume, not even hitting 20%. If that levels out a little bit, then yeah, you could be looking at a Heat cover. Chris Stapps needs to make sure he just picks and pops. And the reason I say that is if you're like, oh, the one thing that could really cause problems is if you get hurt and you're playing Miami, don't don't drive. Just don't do it. Don't do that. This is not about the the Caleb Martin thing where Drew Holiday shoved him, clearly shoved him. It's just like there's a, there's a litany of guys that have gotten hurt on charges from Miami. So say, save yourself, Chris Stapps. Don't be a hero. Don't need to do that. Um, all right, Pelicans Thunder. I'll take Thunder minus seven and a half here. Um, largely ba- based off of top two seeds favored by more than four and a half. We've talked about that trend. It holds for game two as well. Um, don't I, I want to fade the reaction to the, the Pelicans game, which the reaction from everybody was very much like, it, I hate it when this happens, when a team loses and everyone goes out of their way to praise them. And is like Nuggets Lakers last year. Oh, look at look at how they play. Look at look at they play. You know they're live in this series, and I'm like, okay, but they they lost, and they lost because the team with a bunch of college kids who aren't in college, like the spring break crew, out executed them down the stretch. Like the 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 spring break crew looked much more sober than Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum late in the game. Um, I don't trust Willie Green. I'm not going to play JV props. We've had, this has been like a great ongoing debate in the action slack is about what's Willie Green going to do, you know? And it's like, he goes, it's like he can go over and not play his minutes because like, I keep telling everybody, I'm like, Willie doesn't want to play him. And they're like, but he's but like, this matchup makes sense. And I was like, he doesn't want to play him. And then like, guess what? He played him enough to hit the over, which congrats to my, my colleagues that bet the over and got it. Good job. And then he matched him anyway in the last in the last minute of the game, and he will keep doing that. Like if you're if you're if you're curious, like well, he'll, surely he'll he'll correct that. No, I don't think so. I think Willie's probably going to play him less in this game. 
Like if I was going to bet JV, I would bet JV unders because I think there's a good chance he's like, no, I like those Larry enhanced minutes, man. And like the plus minus backs that up. Like they were plus with Larry and minus with JV. And I don't think that that's, that's what Willie Green's going to look at, but it's good. If he, if that number does cross his desk, it's going to reinforce a, a, a prior on him. OKC though, they had a moment where they could have blown this game open. They had it to eight fourth quarter and were like teetering. And it was like just one little run of like two threes and the Pelicans would have been like, all right, that's a wrap. Let's let's try and regroup for game two. Um, I just kind of want to fade the notion that the Pelicans are like really super because the, part of it is I pick up on this. There is a perception, I think, that is expressed in the market that I, I find on social media um, and in media discussions, podcasts, et cetera, which is basically like no one wants to admit OKC's good. They're like, oh, yeah, no, great season. But I mean, like, they're not they're not good, you know. Like, I mean, sure, they got the number one seed in the Western Conference that everyone agreed was brutal, but, like, they're not, like, good. And I'm kind of like, no, <laughs> like, they're really good. They don't have to be the title favorite. They don't have to be the Western Conference favorite. And you can think that that Denver or really, honestly, Minnesota will just fucking smash them in a series when they face a serious franchise. But they're not facing a serious franchise. They're facing the Pelicans without Zion. And like, I like the Pelicans. How do you not like the how do you not like Jose Alvarado and Trey Murphy and Herb Jones? Like, I like Jonas Valanciunas. I like so many of their guys. Also, Brandon Ingram plays for them. So, like, there's things to like in this situation. But that doesn't necessarily mean that just because you like them so much that this is a good matchup or that they're as good as OKC because we have no indication of that this season. And you could be like, well, they covered the last game. Maybe. And maybe that's a reason to go the other way. But I think actually there's an opportunity here to get a better number on the Pelican, on the Thunder rather from open. So I'll lay the seven and a half. Well, we know the hesitancy for Oklahoma City comes with age. And I would say like, yeah, I- I'm probably one of those people who I would err on the side of yeah, experience does matter to some degree, but it's more so a thing in deeper rounds. And it also depends on who you're actually facing. Like, I don't think the test of youth and experience and all that is going to come in the first round against the Pelicans, especially without Zion Williamson, because it's not like the Pelicans have been to the playoffs a bunch either. It's not like yeah. they have some sort of wisdom where it's like, it's not, it's not like Oklahoma City facing potentially the Lakers or the Warriors or somebody like that, who then you can like sort of execute those tropes how you wish. Um, and on the JV point, I mean, his PRA is 26 and a half. His PR, if you just don't want the assist and you just want the points rebounds, 24 and a half. And that's kind of in the danger zone if you do think Willie Green is going to play him fewer minutes. And I, I, I came on here however many weeks ago and was like, listen, I'm tired of like him just sort of lusting over the small ball lineups. I would like to see JV get more rope late in games. But also to the same point, I understand why he doesn't do it all the time given the way he likes Larry Nash lineups. And and do think that JV is clearly a problem for Chet Holmgren and a problem for Oklahoma City. And they could have used his rebounding down the stretch. He had 20 rebounds. And usually in, in basketball, when you have a guy with 20 rebounds, That's you kind of play him. You kind of close with that guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> he just, he did this. I, I first got onto this because I did a bet stream and I lost my mind on a JV under because he had, the line was like, I forget what it was. I think I had his rebounds over nine and a half and he had eight in the first half and then just didn't play. He just, just I, Willie was like, Nope, no, I'm good. And it was a, it was a thunder game. And then I was like, what are you doing? Like you're it's Chet. Like the Lakers kill this team because of their size. And then after the game, Willie green's like, you know, I just thought that we needed to keep up with their, with their pace and, and their spacing and shooting. And I'm just like, that. Why are you trying to play? Like you're trying to outplay the thunder at what the thunder are so good at that they were the number one team in the West. What do you do? Like, do what you do. Do what you, you know do. What I mean? Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get the whole, like, we have to adjust. It, it reminds me of going back to the Knicks, who we mentioned very briefly at the top. Remember that Knicks Pacers series where they felt the need to, to size up yeah. at one point and, and yep. change their starting lineup because Roy Hibbert was decimating them and David West was a problem. And it's like, yeah. no. No. Melo at as the small ball four has been great for you all season. Lean into that more, make them play at your pace, run them up down the floor, whatever. And it didn't work out um, because they ended up adjusting. And once you do that adjustment, like it, it's kind of a tell, like the other team is kind of like, oh, now we can make them play our game. Yeah, exactly. 
as sort of the giveaway here. And to your point, like I like I, I'm of the idea going away from game one where I'm kind of like, I don't want to give the Pelicans so much credit there because I feel like Oklahoma City may have played their worst game of the series. Yeah. There is a world where I look at what Oklahoma City did. I don't I don't think that they're going to just, OK, this was a close game. So now the Pelicans got them in game two, like yeah. there's a chance that we may have seen the Pelicans best effort defensively and that Oklahoma city just beats them by like 12 points. And that wouldn't surprise me at all. And part of the reason I have the under or I'm leaning under is one, the totals at two twelve Now it opened at two thirteen and a half. It was two is two twelve and a half. Now I'll probably like it down to like maybe two ten and a half is where it starts to get a little bit spooky. But I think new Orleans because of the adjustment and because I do think Willie Green might play Larry Nance Jr. more, like they're going to have a hard time scoring on Oklahoma City. Like we saw what Casey Wallace and Lou Dort was doing defensively and CJ McCollum, like I don't know a lot of people that are betting CJ McCollum overs in this series because of the wings that Oklahoma City could throw at them. They're also deep, like uncharacteristically playoff deep, which I think is is in their favor too. New Orleans could be as well if Zion Williamson you know, was there, but yeah, I just don't have a lot of faith in CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram creating consistent offense against Lou Dort and against case and Wallace and against other guys on the Oklahoma city roster. Yeah. And you know, I could be wrong. Maybe that, maybe the thunder will get razzled because they did get frazzled for like four minutes in mid fourth. And I was like, uh Oh, this is going to be a bad narrative game. And then to Mark Dagonal's credit, call timeout and got them settled. And Shea came out and just kind of like calmly scored four points and put that game away. Um, we'll see if they can cover in this one. Uh, one last point, though, I did want to say on that, because I didn't want for people to be confused, because I've talked about in Suns Wolves how important it is for Chris Finch for him to adapt, that he did come out and be like, we're not going to just run the same stuff at you. If you notice, one, there's a balance to it. You want to be able to tailor your problem solving to what you know the problems that they're going to present, while... Uh, keeping some stuff in the bag. Like Darvin Ham took a lot of grief this week for basically saying we've got more adjustments. You have to. Like he's not wrong on that. Like you you have to like you have to keep some stuff for game three, four. By game six, you're out of them. You just gotta have thrown everything out. You have you have to have you have emptied the bag. Um but you do want to keep some stuff back. And Finch in that series has like he didn't use lots of lineups with one big. He played Nas or Rudy, Towns and Rudy or Nas and Towns. Like, he kept two bigs on the floor. Like, if they keep going in that direction, there is a small ball Towns at five lineup that they can go to more. Then that's like an adjustment for later in the series. But it's this balancing act that you have to do. And the other problem here is that's Minnesota trying to compensate for something that has cost them versus the Pelicans. What they did this this season versus OKC is They've leaned into OKC style of play and lost. If you can do small ball better than OKC, you should do small ball. Even if you're a big team, if the Pelicans small ball, this was last year, honestly, when the Pelicans small ball lineups were killer and they had Zion, like if they had Zion, I'd be all about this. Fine. Yeah. Get, get JV off the floor, run Zion four guards, do that. Zion and shooters would murder this OKC team because OKC be, that's when you're like, no, no, we can do what you do, but better because we have Zion. But that they don't. And so, yeah, they need to lean more into um, playing JV. I like the under look, look there as well. I might tell you on that. You can follow Brian's picks in the Action Network app. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate you guys being with us. We'll be back tomorrow with best bets for the Thursday slate. Make sure to tune in then. We'll see you guys again next time. Till then, let's get buckets.